When you wish upon a star, makes no difference who you are. If the sky is bright and you are patient, you'll see a shooting star 10 to 1. And presto! Anything your heart desires will come to you. Your wish is in the bag. Once I did it and ran out of wishes, but the stars kept falling. Then I wondered why they fell at all if there's no gravity in space. We have all seen astronauts swimming in the air on ISS like fish in water. But if you think that it happens because there is zero gravity there, you'll learn something new today. Zero gravity doesn't mean there is none of it. If there was no gravity in space, the Earth wouldn't be able to hold the Moon near itself. All the planets and stars would just fly across the universe freely, bump into each other, and, well, it would probably end things really quickly. Gravity can be tiny, but never absent. This is one of the laws. As for astronauts and the ISS, the Earth's gravity is only 10% less in orbit than it is on the ground. If we build a platform 190 to 250 miles high, it's the altitude of the ISS above Earth, and throw a stone from there, it will fall down just the same way it falls down from your balcony. And this is what happens to Brad Pitt in the science fiction film Ad Astra. Spoiler alert! He falls down from the tower which is so high that it reaches the upper atmosphere, where the ISS is. Now you know that the scriptwriters knew the ABC of physics all right. He was not supposed to float in space. But then why don't astronauts just walk on the floor of ISS as we do on Earth? Well, the reason for it is that when in orbit, they are in a state of constant freefall to Earth. And the ISS itself is also falling to Earth all the time. Sounds super crazy? Now, don't forget that the ISS is also moving horizontally above the planet. And it kind of mishits every time. And as a result, makes a full circle around the Earth following the curve of the planet. The speed that is needed to mishit like this is called Earth orbital velocity and is about 5 miles a second, or 17,500 miles per hour. Sometimes the ISS still gets lower and approaches Earth. To compensate for this, the space station control center corrects its orbit and switches on its engines for a short time to raise it to a former altitude. If you have not become an astronaut like you wanted as a kiddo, you still have the chance to feel like one on the ground. When you sit in a car of a roller coaster and it rises up to the top of the track and then falls down abruptly, you'll be in free fall and feel like astronauts do pretty much all the time. Another way is to take a flight on a small jet which can do aerial stunts. When it flies in a pattern called a parabola, you'll also be in a zero-gravity state for some time. Mm, not the most pleasant feeling, right? That said, why don't they raise ISS higher above the Earth where astronauts won't have to freefall? Astronauts can stay on ISS for so long because the uppermost atmosphere protects them from solar radiation. At the altitude above 310 miles, there are radiation belts that have a destructive impact on humans. And then, if ISS rises too high, the Earth's gravity will become too weak to hold it, and it will leave the Earth's orbit. That's why those super guys have to train hard on special zero-gravity simulators before they go into space. But there is zero gravity in open space, isn't there? You might ask. Or how would spaceships manage to fly to the moon or other planets? If a body is far enough from a space object, say a spaceship flying to Mars from Earth, the gravity of the space object will be too small, and their mutual attraction will roughly balance each other. But no matter how far the bodies get from each other, their mutual attraction never equals zero. The Earth falls down to the Sun the same way the ISS falls on Earth. But since its lateral velocity is big enough, it's been doing this for 5 billion years. But if planets and stars are stuck in their orbits for billions of years due to gravity, how come shooting stars appear in the sky? What we take for shooting stars are just small stones floating in space, and their orbit, or our orbit, makes us run into each other. When the objects meet our planet, they bump into our atmosphere at a high speed and squeeze the air in front of them. The speed is so high that the air gets super hot and starts shining. When you look at this from the ground, you don't see the shining gas and a stone behind it. It just looks like stars, the same as others in the sky, are falling down on Earth. 
soon they go out before they make it to the ground. Since they are just hundreds of feet away from us, they seem to be the same size as true stars that are thousands of light years away. In science, shooting stars are called meteors. If parts of meteors do reach the Earth's surface, they are called meteorites. Super bright meteors are called fireballs. Hundreds of millions of meteors appear in the atmosphere daily. Their total weight can be thousands of tons. And about 100 tons of dust particles, which are too small to be visible in the atmosphere, fall down on Earth from space daily. Most of them just burn there without a trace. On some days of the year, meteors appear in the sky much more often than usual. This is what they call a meteoric shower in science and what we call a star shower. One can see dozens of meteors in a single hour. I guess this is what was happening when I wished upon a star. Where does the star shower come from? When a comet is getting closer to the sun, it gets heated and starts losing its matter. It takes several hundred years for its particle to form a stretched-out tail along the comet orbit. When the Earth crosses this flow, which happens every year, we see a star or meteor shower. Does it mean that comets come very close to our planet? Everybody knows that it's not safe. Well, in fact, no. Meteors can form as a result of a collision of another planet and a smaller space object. Thousands of stones appear as a result of it, and they start moving in their own direction. When their flight is directed towards Earth, they finally get into the atmosphere and become shooting stars. Small space bodies can have quite a different direction, but if they come too close to the Earth, its gravity will turn them around and pull them down. As for comets and bigger meteors, they do not appear out of the blue sky. Astronomers watch closely all the big space objects that could potentially get too close to our planet when moving along their orbit. At least we'll know about this on time and we'll be able to send Bruce Willis and his buddies to deal with it. If you trace the way of meteors on the sky, it will seem like they all fly out of the same spot. It's called a meteoroid stream radiant. This is just an optical illusion, and it appears because of such an effect as perspective. We can see the same effect when we see a railroad track and see that the rails meet in the horizon. In reality, meteor particles are moving along parallel trajectories, just as rail tracks do. Astronomers have found several dozens of meteoroid streams. They are usually called after the names of constellations where their radiant is. Perseids have a radiant in the constellation Perseus, and you can observe them in the middle of August. So mark the date on your calendar and be ready for a star shower. Do you know anything else about shooting stars? Let me know down in the comments! Hey, if you learned something new today, then give the video a like and share it with a friend. And here are some other cool videos I think you'll enjoy. Just click to the left or right, and remember, stay on the bright side of life.